Welcome to the 1964 Club Film. And we start our programme at Charterhouse, the public school in Surrey, where driving tests have been arranged. Philip Mann and Bugatti opens proceedings. And Ferguson Wood in a 1910. Rolls-Royce. This is the Jack Barclay car, hence the registration number. Alan May leaps into his AC. And Patrick Marsh does the same thing with the Austin 7. Eddie Riddle is winding up his GM. But it isn't cooperating today. Many makes were represented at the meeting. Most were behaving better than his did. Humber. And as ever, Hamish Moffat is in residence with his Brescia Bugatti, stopping just with his wheels where they should be. Members of Charterhouse School acted as marshals and time recorders. Ferguson Wood brings the rolls into the Wiggle Woggle. And Riddle's cycle car is behaving a bit better. Nigel Arnold Forster in his Fraser Nash. and Sam Clutton in a Type 43 Bugatti. Bugatti again, but this time a Type 37 with Dudley Gagan. Petty Haig, a well-known competitor in her BMW 328. Bernard Kane, Type 37 Bugatti. And Hamish again in full flight. Alfa Romeo in the garaging test. Hamish makes short work of his garaging test. And Barry Clark brings proceedings to an end 
by doing it without getting into the car at all. I suppose it saves on fuel. And in complete contrast, we go over to the race meeting at Silverstone in April. An overcast day, but a full paddock. This is where people do all their winter repairs. Austin 7 Special, Dudley Gagan explains how to get round the track. Philip Mann is in the TT Sunbeam. And there's O'Reilly in bits. This is Bromley Johnson. Maserati again in bits. This is the Historica Martini. And there is Maureen Scott. Footage GN, not short of chains. and Gagan with a paintbrush. Paxton's ABC, a delightful light car, and by no means slow. That's Bars Alvis. Again, by no means slow. Barry Clark's Gordon England, Austin 7. Frank Lockhart. Another Austin set. This belongs to Hope. Glister's Austin 7. and a picnic atmosphere as ever. It's a good thing to start the youngsters whilst they're still young. That's Sid Day with his son. And that's Cottam's ERA. Peter Waller talking to Horton. And there's O'Reilly in bits. That's Bromley Johnson. So the marshals go to take up their positions round the track. And Dudley Johns comes out with his Fraser Nash.
very popular for Silverstone Racing was the Fraser Nash. Austin 7 with a bolster tank. And the Riley rebuild is still in full flight. Tony Hutchins with the Bugatti. And there's a comma truck done up like a Bugatti. The Burgle family having breakfast with Clive Bissett. Bernard Kane also tucking into a meal before the dramas start. There's a delightful Bentley and there's Maureen Scott still fettling the Historica Martini Maserati. And at the risk of boring you, Bromley Johnson was still working away quietly on the Riley rebuild. But then we're over to the all comers scratch race. Horton's Connaught goes into the lead, followed by Sid Day and an ERA, Wilkes Cooper Bristol, and Bertie Brown and Nigel Arnold Forster, both thoroughly in play. Woodcut and Margulis chases Horton, both in Connaughts. That's Gagans, ERA in full flight. But Margulis won in that event and we move to the Atala Trophy. Geoffrey Sinjin leads Nigel Arnold Forster at the first lap at Woodcote. With Burgle in pursuit. But it was Geoffrey Sinjin who won with Arnold Forster second. Barry Clark comes to the line for a five lap handicap. Waitman Salmson and Paxton's ABC are there. And everybody's friend, Gibbo the handicapper. They're away, but Stanton's Lagonda spins on the first lap. Paxton's ABC scrapes through. Lou Wickham in the Alvis is going pretty wide at Woodcote. And Simpson's Alvis spins at the same spot. As does Harris in the Austin Ulster. And an Elvis joins the spin club. But at the end, it was Ron Footed who got the Merry Down Trophy. And away he went in Dames Longsworth's 3098 Vauxhall at the end of a perfect day at Silverstone, which proved a little bit too much for some people. And it's over to Bewley for the driving tests in July. The museum has also some railway memorabilia, as well as a parade ground ideally suited for driving tests. Tim Carson is explaining the rules to a competitor. Condon's AC is off the line.
Barry Clark, and his faithful mount, the Gordon England Austin 7. Barry was pretty quick, but unfortunately went rather too many times round the pylon. Tony Jones explains how it is to be. And there is a bit of a discussion with Tony Bird and Tim Carson. But Barry has to accept that perhaps he wasn't quite right. Harry Rose in the most desirable four and a half litre blower Bentley. Certainly a large car for quite a sharp circuit. And as another Ulster finds its way round, we find Bernard Kane in the Type 37 Bugatti. He thinks he might have got it wrong. But it's supposed to be a fun day out. Parks and the singer seems to be doing a few adjustments on the line. And Bernard Kane waits for his turn for the next test. An unusual car for driving tests, this is Braley's Austro Daimler. Lord Montague was there with Michael Sedgwick. And at the same meeting, the Austin 7 Register hold their special day. Around 200 Austin 7s turned up. And it's interesting to see six almost identical cars coming through the gate but that one was a bit different bring and buy sale provided some spares and there was everything from Austin 7 nippies to ruby tourers to sports specials to even a fiberglass GT special They even have their own club van. But it's back to the driving tests. And that's Blake in his 1927 Chummy. John Malan pushes his Fraser Nash. and an Austin 7 Coupe raises its wheel. Sedgwick is taking notes. And a Bentley 3 litre of Mr. Pack ends up as a three-wheeler. But everybody's there to help 
His Lordship, plus Tony Bird, plus Harry Rose. And eventually, they managed to get everything back together, but not without some difficulty. It's no lightweight when you've got the brake drum on the tarmac. You've got to raise it to get the wheel on. But eventually, Mr. Pack is away with four wheels. And Bernard Kane puts the road plugs back in the Bugatti at the end of the day. Tony Bird works out the results and we say farewell to Bewley for another year. And towards the end of the year, in December, we go to Silverstone for our driving tests. Not a terribly good choice of date as the track was as wet as it could be. You really have to be an enthusiast in the middle of December in a cloudburst at Silverstone. But it's hood up and Pax Bentley, with four wheels this time, is making a good job of the tests. Clark's HRG is ideally suited to these conditions. And Peter Cole spins his four and a quarter Bentley. But at least he stays dry. Nigel Arnold Forster in his Fraser Nash. And Mr. Lilly in his charming white Jowett light car. One can understand why there weren't a large number of spectators, because it was a little bit cold and a little bit damp. That's Mr. Blake in his chummy. And just to warm ourselves up, we decided that perhaps speeding things up might be a good idea. This is Bell's Talbot, going quicker than it's designed to do. as is Keith Hill, who we've reversed. He didn't really go as fast as that backwards. Fuller's Rolls-Royce, certainly doing it in style. And again, we tried going backwards with Mr. Yarwood in the Austin 7. It really was a question of doing almost anything to keep ourselves amused. 
one has to pay tribute to the marshals. There's Bernard Kane in the Bugatti. He's a bit puzzled. They went that away. More high speed filming for Mrs. Woods in the Invicta. And that's Ken Eckersley talking to Richard Burgle, both Bugatti owners. Hot dog stand did great business all day. Tony Jones in his 3098 Vauxhall. Ron Footit, well known on the racing circuit, but using his GN for a little bit of driving test. There's Mr. and Mrs. Bob Wood in the Invicta. And a Type 40 Bugatti that seems to have become confused with a motorboat. Dudley Gagan, Type 37 Bugatti. Richard Brown and Dudley embark all necessary kit for living underwater. And they're away, off home, to Surrey, quite a distance in the Bugatti, on the roads in this weather. Tim Carson decides it's been a good day in spite of the weather. And Ben Walker holds a consultation. But by golly, it was wet. That's Waitman in the Blue Salmson. And Tim Carson's lasting quite well. I think he's hoping that they're getting near to the end of the list of competitors. He still seems cheerful though. Preparing to go home, Macquire in the Riley Imp. John T. Williamson, Bentley. And as we come to the end of the club film for 1964, Bill Boddy gets into a Rochdale Olympic in order to head back to his home in Wales. And so we say farewell to the club film for 1964.